Personally, I found myself saying a prayer. And it was a prayer that just didn't end. You just keep talking to yourself. And that prayer was not that may I live through this so much, as may I do my job and not let your buddy down. That's the important thing. You are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Oh, yes. I don't, I don't like that as much as when you get oh, yeah. like higher. Without. Yeah, I, I thought I was trying something different. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, settle in. We are the Sagely Stage Stooges. My name is Steven, and I am joined by Grady. Hello. Josh. Sup, yo? And sleepy boy Chris. Just storming the beaches over here, man. Storming Norman. We are in somewhat of a rare mood today. Uh, it's a weekday. Yeah, we're not uh, work day. Hey, speak for yourself, man. <laughs> right, and that's <laughs> that's somewhat rare. <laughs> it's rare, right? And um, but um, today it is uh, June the fifth. Tomorrow, obviously, being June the sixth, which really? marks the seventy fifth anniversary of D Day. Oh, dang! Day I didn't that... realize it was seventy five. Yeah, me neither. I was wondering why it was. People were making a bigger deal of it than they usually make. You know, usually it's just kind of like, <laughs> that's funny. I thought, <laughs> I thought that's why you brought it up this time, Grady. <laughs> no, it's just like, oh, it's you know, it's D Day. We can you know talk about it and everything. Multiples of five, baby. Like, Multiples of five. Is is there a word for the seventy fifth? You know, it's not the yeah. It's the called the seventy fifth anniversary. Like work the third on that for quell. You know, like yeah. in Hunger Games. Uh, you um probably a bad topic. Get, get get to work on that. We'll uh, stats department. You can, okay. Uh, you can yeah, I'll let you know what I us. find out. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'll research that all session long until I find it. All right. uh, 75 years is a semi sesquicentennial. It sounds there you go. unnecessary. My job's done. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Say it again semi sesquicentennial? Semi sesquicentennial. Semi sasquatch centennial. Yeah, a sesquicentennial is 150 years, so a semi sesquicentennial oh, is half of it. <laughs> well, That's dumb. I don't like that as much. It's a yeah, 75th people are anniversary. Dumb for coming up Brought to that. you by the anniversary Wikipedia page. There you go. Oh, great. There you go. Grady's a mod on there. But, um, yeah, so we obviously, uh, you know, that's what we're going to talk about. If you hadn't put that together yet, then our intellect is far beyond your ability to comprehend. Well, that's the case either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, the tricky thing about this is going to be that, obviously, while important and interesting, fascinating even, um, it's not a very happy event. Uh, you know, it marks the, the you know, essentially the, the, the fall of the Germans in World War II, but... Uh, that's pretty happy. Um, it, which, which is good. Yeah, what's not happy about well, it? Well, Stephen, lots and lots <laughs> and lots and lots of people died. Watch out, Vox is going to get you demonetized. Well, okay, man. if you including if you focus on the bad part, sure, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> including obviously lots of Americans <laughs> and Canadians and you know other, all Brits and all the Allies. All um, of the Brits? Yeah, they all died. Jesus, all this was every this is bad. One. We're talking about yeah. the dark timeline, uh, D Day. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're Normandy fails where rommel sure, got sure. all the defenses he wanted right yeah and was present oh it was something like 18 percent of them were complete or something like that yeah uh yeah the time well which is wild anyway we'll talk about that in a second because yeah that that's an interesting stat anyway so yeah i i guess where i kind of you know like to start is is, is in some of the the things that most people are going to be sort of familiar with when it comes to d-day you know I, it, in my head the first things that that came to my mind when you think of Normandy and the invasion is saving Private Ryan. Talker's and... bad for a day. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was going to say, 
Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Saw the first. It was Medal of Honor Frontline. No, yeah. Allied Assault was the one first. when you're riding in the boat and then you they shoot you out of it and you're in the oh, water. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But Allied, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. And they right. redid that on Conquer's Bad Friday. Sure. Frontline was Omaha Beach. Allied Assault was. Allied Assault did it first, and then then when they made Frontline, they did it again. I think Allied Assault was a PC game, and Frontline was on console. Yeah. I think I it's yeah. been forever. That's all right. I only anyway. played the console one, so I wouldn't have. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Band of Brothers. Mm, was yeah. the other thing I was actually going to mention. Uh, <laughs> so the best laid plans, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Of right. squirrels and men. Yeah. Um, so you know we don't want to <laughs> sit here and like uh, give you a like history lesson. But we're gonna. This is this is going to be the uh, patented Sagely Stage Stooges. Patented. If you, to, if, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know it, go read it. <laughs> like I don't, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's if you don't know us. Our history department is just a sign that says "Go look it up." Yeah, just (laughs) just Google it. Yeah, you've got you've got Wikipedia. We we're not responsible for your education. Man, I really hope Uh, we get to the point like when these uh, like twenty three or whatever Democrats debating each other on stage, where at any point it's just like, well, if you Google it, just Google it. I just I just want the debate to devolve. (laughs) I can picture Bernie Sanders saying that anybody can find this out. Just Google it. Okay, Google it. Uh, Google 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 it. it. That's. That's a heck of a heck of a catchphrase for a politician to have these days. I mean, if you want to see Mr. Biden find this stuff out, just sniffing it. young girls, then just Google it. Just Google it. I don't know why it almost became Trump. It's almost Hashtag like just yeah, Google, that was it. Google loves Trump. Trump, Trump, <laughs> Trump tried to disguise himself as Kamala Harris and got on stage. <laughs> Just Google it. How much money will Google pay somebody Look, to do that? Look, I'm know? the best. I've done the best job. Just Google it. All right. All right. So was, back to D-Day. Uh, the right. romantic so, invasion. Um, I guess we'll just jump right into it. Just like our boys did. God, I hope not. With something to bring up kind of at the beginning, um, be the prelude to it in terms of like trying to ah, sure. yeah, cover, yeah, yeah. Um, cover good, up the, yeah. these operations in Operation Bodyguard. with. Uh, yes, Operation Bodyguard is is very interesting. Good way to start. Yeah, no. Um, I found that really, really cool because uh, they're essentially just trying to fool the Germans into thinking the landings are happening anywhere but Normandy. Um, well, like, like yeah, <laughs> everywhere. I like around bigger scales and everything. Right? To read mm-hmm. that note, yeah, they they had like, like fake tanks and stuff, yeah. inflatable yeah, tanks. And- those and like a fake tanks, British yeah. army, right? Like the yeah. British Fifth Army or something was. Well, because not you'd be real. moving tanks out of where they one. were, if uh, and, and stacking them up in other places. And so, if they're paying attention to where you last had your tanks and they're not there anymore, they might get suspicious. I wonder how those so. letters would be written nowadays. Would be like, you find the fake letter. We're totally not attacking here tomorrow. Lol. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag. Normandy. Well, yeah, they they had started breaking the or had already broken the Enigma machine, right? So they were like sending. Yeah, they broke in, picked too. it up, and smashed it, and laughed in Hitler's face, and walked away. Yeah, huh. Hitler cried didn't for like directly three days. in his face. I'll show you. Um, that was my noise. It was hard to get to and stuff. But no, but yeah, you're right. They, uh, they had broken the code. They were um, feeding them false information. They had a, a kind mm-hmm. of a network of double agents too. Yeah, um, like yeah. All, all of the all of the German spies almost at this point mm-hmm. had like turned uh, you know to double agents, right? Because yeah, and they were was, getting such good, <laughs> such quote unquote good information, and such you know so reliable yeah. because they were just being housed by the British government. Um, <laughs> that the Germans had stopped sending any more spies over. They're like, ah, yeah, Ger- yeah. then that spy network is great. It works well. Awesome. Excuse me, is this for I can join the double agent club? I- no, look, we're all full up on members, okay? We can't take any more. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I've learned the secret handshake and everything. No, no, I'm sorry, we have too many. And look, I can't sorry, go to the Soviets, they'll so fucking put me in a gulag. <laughs> um, there was this one dude, my, my favorite one of this network... Uh, was a guy named Juan Pujol Garcia. Okay. Uh, he was Spanish and tried to he tried to join up uh, with the Allies, and they were like, mm, "Fuck you!" So he he <laughs> Fuck you. tried to join up with the Germans, and they were like, "Sure, whatever." But he actually was trying to sabotage them the whole time. Yeah. He goes to Lisbon in Portugal and just hangs out in a library and uses public information to feed. Uh, the Germans like just a bunch of false shit and uh, and messes them up, but like he just blames it on fictional subordinates in his spy network that he doesn't actually have. 
<laughs> yeah, I totally heard That's this incredible. from Spy Number Four, and they're just like, "Okay, whatever. This sounds it's legit." Like, it's not my fault. Don Quixote just keeps fucking up and attacking windmills, man. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Come on. But he's awesome, and he he plays a role in this um, Operation Bodyguard in the part called Operation Fortitude, which was mm-hmm. one of their like, you know, oh, we're gonna try to attack over here. It sounds yeah, like a really they, confusing movie sequel, like Operation Bodyguard Part Two. <laughs> Operation Fortitude. <laughs> <laughs> or yes. Operation Fortitude is like the sequel to the game Fortitude, and it's even tougher. And you have to have like a lot of fortitude. Well, yeah, there. if you if you use a little tool, and then if you hit the sides, it buzzes at you. It's just not. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to jump in. I'm going to jump in here real quick. Yeah. Um, it, the the you know in in kind of setting up all of this uh, espionage, as it were, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. There was so much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, reconnaissance, surveillance, um, <laughs> that, that was done beforehand. You know, I mean, they had, they had taken like, like, what was it like hundreds of that, like nearly a million photos of the beach. And so, you know, that's, they're a lot flying of beach these... that's nothing compared yeah. to Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Yeah, imagine nowadays we just need Instagram influencers over there in droves doing. <laughs> we just got satellites. Oh, we're just here anyway. to take but pictures. And that's it. Hashtag me on Normandy Beach. Hashtag invasion five uh, days countdown. Woo. Hashtag Omaha. Uh, you, ma'am, you're gonna have to scrub <laughs> scrub that hashtag. Uh, hashtag Operation Bodyguard. So uh, uh, about uh, about all anyway. the surveillance, Steve. right? <laughs> so did and, we uh, find Waldo? That's what I wanted to. No, yeah, man. probably. To this day, they took, like I said, nearly a million pictures, and it obviously it was one of those. Like, okay, the Germans know that these planes are flying by and taking pictures, so it was like out of necessity and as a tactic to set up all of these falsehoods, you know, because we needed the pictures and we needed the information to make sure that Normandy invasion was successful, but also in doing so, it was going to alert the Axis that this was likely going to happen soon so then we also had to like double down on that by feeding them false information thinking that it was actually happening somewhere else Mm -hmm. and so to make sure that that was believable there was also like you know false reconnaissance and Uh, like you said false armies yeah yeah that was one of the things that struck me is like they uh, and I forget exactly how they pulled it off, but they CGI. were like false British armies and mm-hmm. you know troop amassments in Britain that well they had like, they pointed had built... to them going to the one of the ports port the I forget the the closest one across the channel or whatever yeah I can't which made more sense of, my head but of course yeah. that wasn't where they were going and you mentioned like those inflatable tanks and those um they had put these like they had like these these some sort of metallic devices. That they put like in the waters and Window. like on the so that so that like when the radars would scan, it would scan as though they were tanks uh, and weapons yeah, okay. and buildings and like all this stuff. And so they would like, oh, there's an amassment of like you know equipment here, and mm-hmm. that army's still there even though it, it had long gone. Huh. Yeah, that's <laughs> called a window. It was just actually strips of aluminum, or as they were calling yeah. aluminium. <laughs> aluminium. <laughs> but yeah, that's all it was, and uh, it would ping that's on the wild. radar, like you said. Yeah, it just pops up on the radar, so it's so cool. Yeah, that anyway. that is neat. Continue. For sure. But yeah, no, the deception um It was campaign, Nor- there was one that Norway said they were threatening. Else? Yeah, Norway mm-hmm. and uh Pas de Calais. Yeah. That that was nailed the port it. I was thinking. Can't be how you say it, but Yeah, no, <laughs> you nailed it. Nailed it. Port de Cali. <laughs> That's the one. Oh, yeah, right over there. Right across <laughs> the bridge. Well that's why everyone got confused. No one could fucking say it. Yeah. Man, California is so far away. Why are we going there? <laughs> How the hell do you think Germans are going to think we're invading California? That don't even make sense. That's ours. <laughs> That'll really screw with them. Why would they it's been a that? really deep, deep deception. Okay? Right. Yeah. <laughs> My pure, do we have California? <laughs> <laughs> God. All right. Um, yeah. California Uber Alice. Right. What else about Bodyguard? <laughs> um... That was the main thing. It was just that, like, the, the lengths they were going through, you know, all the fake radio traffic, the, yeah. the, like we were talking about, the just the levels of deception, the spies involved in, in getting that going. Well, I mean, being so multinational. Fake beach parties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was wild. I mean, like. They were wild. Just, just so, like, 
It's like the birth of espionage, you know, like the birth of reconnaissance. No, it isn't, but okay, uh, probably not. No, really. not at it's all. Not, but, but yeah, it I is the not in this instance, but World War Two is the birth of the OSS, with yeah. the yeah. predecessor to the mm-hmm. CIA. It, it is espionage on a scale office of ungentlemanly warfare. Not quite as as heavy before, you know. <laughs> I even read that. Um, you know, obviously they they had gone through so many different code names and stuff regarding Normandy just as a whole. Um, I wanted to be in that and room I think it just was... coming up with goofy code names that are jokes, like inside <laughs> jokes. <laughs> and yeah, I think it was maybe the New York Times. The, the um, Daily Telegraph is what you're Ah, name. Daily Telegraph. Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. I was going to say if it was New like... York Times, you could call it Operation Anti-Semitic Political Cartoon. That's a little wordy. <laughs> Operation you know? Anti-Semitic. No, <laughs> I, don't th- I don't think that really works against the Nazis, though, right? <laughs> well, they, um, you should look in the New York Times during that time period, but sure. They um, they were, like, in their crossword puzzle, their daily crossword puzzles. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, really uh, important code words for yeah, the that... invasion were popping up in their in their crossword puzzles and like mi5 you know is like investigating it and everything and it's like they didn't end up finding anything <laughs> like, what the hell we just <laughs> talked about this this morning oh okay. yeah it was like, who put that's... this in the crossword yeah the words included utah utah beach okay you know, right omaha for omaha beach overlord wow. the entire operation's name the whole <laughs> operation uh, mulberry referring uh, to the mulberry, the mulberry uh, harbors we'll talk harbors and neptune mm. Uh, which was, which was a plant, which is to God of the Sea. Uh, Their sea oh, part of it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. The sea well, you need God Juno of the Sea to, to pull it off. So, no, what got, what got me was the way that those those code words got leaked. It's just so, like, anticlimactic, I guess. Oh, how? Because wasn't, wasn't the guy that was putting together the Daily Telegraph's um, crosswords, he was, like, living next to one of the bases and just hanging out with, like, some of the 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 army chaps and that's how they got the words get leaked or something like that i think i read it is something like that yeah let me see where because I, I read that too. like i think he just lived next to one of the one of the british bases and like mm-hmm. he would go over there and hang out with them and they were i don't i guess they were telling him about it or they were using the words and he was like yeah i'll put those in the, t- in the telegraph but it, while while grady confirms that i'll, I'll wax for him i you know oh, that's nice. some of the other random one of some of the other random things I read was, you know, um, at some point, one of the documents containing a lot of the plans like flew out of the window of one of the the planning rooms. I don't even remember where this was. And some <laughs> dude like picked it up and he brought it back and he was like, ah, my eyesight's too bad. I, I couldn't read it anyway. But like that guy. He's How like, dead was he? Oh. Like, if he... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, Learning. I promise I can't read. I promise. No, look, look, you. look, show it to me. Show me a piece of paper. I can't read it. I promise. <laughs> and like, uh, there was one. Yeah, because how do you prove you can't read? You know, like, yeah, that's I don't tough. know. Yeah, there was one squad. Uh, you know, because all these all these kids when they were you know coming into. Coming into Normandy, it's like, oh, France is, you know, this land of debauchery and sex, and you're just going to fuck anything goals. you want. Oh. And so, like, you know, at some point, you know, while some of the British fellas were out, you know, pubbing around before they were going to go, yeah. they had, like, one of the commanders had, like, hired, like, women to follow these men around and make sure that they weren't talking about the plans, you know, nights before. I don't know. They, oh, okay. So what what happens if they were talking about the plans? You got a spanking. Uh, well, no sex everyone, at time for you. Everyone dies. So yeah, it was. Um, you're right. He was living next to um, a camp of American and Canadian troops. Oh, American and Canadian stationed okay. up there, um, preparing for the invasion. And uh, there's a apparently the guy who was compiling it was also a headmaster at that school there, and just is that um, Lord Tweedsmuir? Or whatever? Or is uh, that the guy investigating it? I just thought his no, name was... Uh, Leonard Daw. Oh, that's right. Okay. Man, even if you had made that name Daw. up, like I would have believed you with how British it is. Oh, yeah. No, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. Great. It mm-hmm. wasn't Lord Tweedsmere. Leonard Tweedsmere. Tweedsmere. Yeah. Lord Tweedsmere is, was the senior intelligence offer atta- officer attached to the Canadian Army. Ah, uh, he's Lord. the one that investigated it and, and determined all this. <laughs> anyway, I think I interrupted you. He was... So Leonard Daw is posted next to these British and... Canadian kids and yeah, and he apparently just like would like 
get i you know ideas or ask the kids for like oh yeah well it'd be a cool word to put in the in the crossword and, shit. <laughs> and they you know they were around these soldiers and everything who were training and they i guess they just would hear them or something that's the like just they either say it's a coincidence or that's how they got the that was in their it. subconscious. They heard uh, the word Utah said yeah, seven times yeah. in a day, so it was just oh, well. Utah would be a great name. Utah, yeah, sure, whatever. But yeah. but it is interesting that like days before, um, or you know, not long before anyway. Um, D Day. All well, how long was this? Was this like uh, years it's a run before? from seventy five years ago? It's from May the second to <laughs> June the first of that okay. year. So yeah, like but, uh, okay, <laughs> so it was a beforehand. decent stretch of time, but. But still, like that—that that would scare the shit out of me. Yeah, as as a British or a, any kind of intelligence officer <laughs> as was a involved British. in planning this, we're like, "Oh my god, this is you know out in the newspaper." Yeah, MI five gets doing. yeah gets yeah. You know, gets word that like there's a random ass newspaper that's got a crossword <laughs> puzzle that has like all yeah. of the code words from this yeah, super right. secret operation that will determine yes, the world but war. But the Germans would never believe that they'd be so stupid to publish them in the newspaper. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hiding in plain sight, of course. No, this is just what Grady did to us with those with those fake uh, news headlines that we did that one time. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> No, so but he would know we wouldn't be believe that, so there's no way that... Mm. <laughs> or, yeah, I'm sorry. That's what you that say, was Grady? The, I was just going to say uh, that this would be kind of the equivalent of, you know, the Los Alamos local crossword puzzle <laughs> is showing up like Manhattan, yeah. Neutron, uh, <laughs> Oppenheimer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oppenheimer. Oh, wow, yeah. Oppenheimer. How would so, you... What's the clue for that? <laughs> Silly well, that's learning. not our job to determine, Stephen. That's some poor crossword designer. I just anyway. So, um, I guess just I think this will probably top off the things that happened beforehand, right? We're still mm-hmm. beforehand. Uh, yep. The weather and all that was was kind of interesting to read about, yeah. and kind of along with that, uh, Eisenhower's failure letter. Well, yeah, because, remember this was you know, well before video games started putting dynamic weather and everything. Right, yeah, this is uh, well before Burnout Paradise 5 or whatever had the dynamic weather that there was a right, right, No, right. we're just a few days away from E3, and I'm hoping we go through dynamic weather again like we did last year. <laughs> I, no, I hope everything have has dynamic trend, right? weather now. Anyway, keep going. But, um, yeah, so, like, because the uh, Allies controlled so much of the waters surrounding, you know, in, in, the, in the English Channel. Well, they're going to mention the, our secret weather machine. The germ? no, not right now, <laughs> uh, maybe later. The Germans like weren't getting the proper meteorological reports, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, y'all back uh, me up if I'm absolutely off here, but I think that's the no. Case. You're right because they didn't um, have contr- you know uh, access to the Atlantic, so they were like in Paris or something trying to read the weather. Yeah, so they're like, ah, it's gonna storm you can't for like read the, next the weather two or three weeks. Uh, so you know their invasion or whatever, that's not gonna happen because it's gonna be too stormy to do it. So I think, uh, and y'all might know more about this, but uh, was it Rommel and Hitler were like, ah, well, let's take two weeks off. It's going to be too stormy anyway. Well, uh, Rommel for sure. Hitler was, was not going to be there for, you know. Okay. So at that. least He'll Rommel be... was like, I'm going to yeah. go back. No, Rommel was going to talk to Hitler to try to get some more panzers or something, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So he was going to be away from the front or, you know, the where this invasion was supposed to happen because he, you know, the weather wasn't going to let them invade. Mm -hmm. Um, but it ended up, um, you know, right, uh, I guess, you know, the day, day before and day of this invasion being, uh, letting up just enough for them to invade. Well, I think still, they still will delay 24 hours. Sure. It it was like barely, it it wasn't ideal because the whole thing was like, they planned to go in at a certain tide at a certain Mm -hmm. time of the month and everything. And the next Mm -hmm. time around was going to be like. The weeks, 18th and 20th and or something. Yeah, it was a yeah. go now or yeah. we're not going. This kind is of over, thing. yeah. Right. Um, and so that kind of leads into, I mean, the weather was just good enough to allow them to do it. But also the Eisenhower failure letter that he wrote, he wrote it because he was like, well, shit, if the weather you know, kind of screws us over, I, I think that's why he wrote it. Or just the fact or that just they, if they could, did it any, anything could have failed. <laughs> yeah. But right. at the time, the weather wasn't great either. Um, he wrote this letter, you know, taking full responsibility for the failure of the um, of the invasion, which like to me I, and some of the wording in there was very like, like, I don't know, 
he it took, feels genuine. Yeah, he took full personal responsibility. He didn't say, oh, well, this could have gone better if such and such. He's like, no, I made this well, decision. Well, you know, if the weather had been a little <laughs> yeah, better. Right. Or, or these lousy like Brits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he, <laughs> now he fully he, he wrote a, out this letter. He was a leader, took man. full responsibility for everyone, you know, you know, having failed if it yeah. happened uh, prior to the the invasion. So I just thought mm-hmm. that was interesting, like how much person, how much he put it on his back and didn't like, you know, write it off. So it kind of kind of showed his character there that, mm-hmm. you know, that he didn't dodge responsibility for all of these lives he was about to put on the line with no idea if it was going to work or not, really. Well, and so. not to go too far off topic, but, you know, I mean, the the expected to- the expected death toll uh for just the allies for normandy was i mean like 10 to 20,000 i mean like they had like they <laughs> the expectations we the, the actual death toll was under their expectations which is shocking to think because of how many people were killed well, that's the thing they that, expected a slaughter. You don't think like, about they went into that operation expecting, like, knowing how many people were going to die. Well, that's the thing that a right. lot of people don't consider when you think about it from like Ike's position or something, where it's just like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna just be posted up in my office all day. I'm gonna walk amongst my men, knowing that I'm about to send thousands of them to their death. Tens of yeah, them. like I, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking like every other one or every third one is not going to live this, and I'm going to yeah. go out there and you know look them in the face anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean it does end up being a slaughter like four thousand four hundred uh, fourteen confirmed dead, um, right in the landing, and you know ten thousand casualties. But they're yeah. expecting you said ten thousand. Like yeah, they were expecting 10, like 20, 10 dead to twelve. Yeah, ten to twelve thousand dead. Oof. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I imagine yeah. that. And um, one of the th- you're talking about the speech and the kind yes. of owning it. And so, yeah, I was about to get back to that, but go ahead. Um, I was just going to draw attention to um, kind of the way he wrote it. I was reading this article on it um, sure. by Scott Simon of NPR, and he was focusing on the actual, you know, the handwritten copy of it. How he yeah. scratches out um, this particular uh, operation yeah. and he replaces it with my decision to attack. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so like he like goes me. out of his way to to like yeah. take full responsibility yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. And I think towards the end he says any blame or fault is mine alone like that's, you know. Mm-hmm. He's like this shit's on me guys, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so, the that, last line of it. Um if any yeah. blame or fault attaches to the attempt it is mine alone. It is mine alone. Yeah. yeah. That's just And uh, it's just yeah. It's, it's a hell of a letter because you would never you would never see politicians in like our age, you know, just be so humbled, you know. Yeah. yeah. What gets what gets me is like the thought process writing that letter has to be like, I really fucking hope I don't have to give anyone this letter, you know, because this is like yeah. worst case scenario. Uh, this is like, you know, I'm writing this out in hopes that I never it never comes to light, you know. Yeah. But no, it is just impressive that he has the the balls basically to, to do it. Well, it's incredible it to think about like what it's all wild. these guys are going through at this time. Cause like, I mean, just look, think about, you know, Churchill, you know, he's yeah. thinking like, Oh, yeah. oh man, this has got to happen. And you know, back when I was a general, you know, back when I was a leader in world war one, I, I fucked up royally in that naval battle. And like, right. this is my chance to redeem myself. Yeah. And Not to mention his, his land is being encroached upon. Right. Us. Because this is very personal to the, Brits yeah, we're past right the battle of Britain. Yeah. It's very close to him. You know, it's very close to Churchill. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if this fails, if the Nazis get to keep yeah. their state, they're right next it. door. That's it. This is like the <laughs> yeah. last. Yeah. This is across <laughs> the English channel from home. Yeah. So I mean, regroup and come like... back in 10 years or something. You know? Right. Or two. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of things on the line with this particular invasion. And that's, that's kind of a personal look into one of the leaders. I, so I really thought that was interesting, that letter that he wrote. No, Ike is yeah, cool. for sure. Ike's all right. What'd you say, Chris? What? We like Ike. We like Ike. Oh, we like we Ike. We like Ike. Everybody likes Ike. We got to put yeah. that in. Uh, just put that sound clip in. Ike for president. Ike for president. Ike for president. Ike for president. You like Ike. I like Ike. Everybody likes Ike. Ike for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. Washington. We don't want John or, or Harry. Let's do that big job right. Do, do. Just get in step with the guy that's up. Get in step with I. You like Ike. I like Ike. Everybody likes Ike for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take Ike to Washington. We'll take Ike to Washington. 
the time for all good Americans to come to the aid of their country. I'm good with it's that. a terrible little jingle, but it's <laughs> catchy. Those are the best. It's like every uh, jingle from any um, auto dealer in East Texas. President Eisenhower, <laughs> what do you feel like your greatest achievements in life were? Um, World War II, leading my men in World War II to victory and the American highway system. <laughs> Being mentioned on the Sagely Stage Stooges. I'm that's sure. that's the close third, man. It's got to be. It's his greatest achievement, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anything else leading up to the day? Um, well, there was a lot of things to... leading up to the day. But... Well, sure. I just mean that we want to touch on, like, you know, briefly-ish. Oh, I was going to uh, start at, um, you know, the city of like the dawn of man. Yeah, oh, you oh, okay. just cut off my joke. And now I hate you don't it. have to go that far back. Uh, well, I mean, you can really can, trace this back to the... We can edit to the, Well, look, we can butterfly effect this all the way To from, the golden age of Athens, I mean, but you don't have to go all the way further uh, back from right, that. Right. The burning of the well, library of Alexandria. You, I think if you go up to like, sort of like the Roman Empire, then you really kind of get into like the warfare and the creation of like organized warfare, so... Steven, what are you talking yeah. about? No. Sun Tzu, all that? No, no. Yes, the famous Roman general. <laughs> what would I say? <laughs> I guess the only other thing I would add in, in terms of being before, you know, the, the build up to it is kind of just to set the stakes. Like you were kind of mentioning this, Stephen, about how consequential uh, the mm -hmm. invasion was and the decision and everything. It was a big turning point in the war to open up another front. Um, they had kind of decide about, decided about that in the Tehran conference. Well, it was the first, it was... I, arguably the first offensive that put the Germans on the def on the defensive. It was the first time that the Germans had been in a defensive position. On the, the Western Front, yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah. it was the opening up of that because before the that conference, before Stalin met with Roosevelt and Churchill in Iran. <laughs> that meeting alone is fairly interesting. Yeah, um, but he, he, you know, he goes there and, and that's after the Battle of Stalingrad. And... Uh, the Battle of Kirks, where they were the evil Kirk and the good Kirk, like finally. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that How famous battle Kirk? tilted the scales of the war. No, uh, but the Soviets at that point were on the march on the Eastern Front. Yeah, uh, they weren't, mm -hmm. you know, necessarily going to succeed, um, but they were really hoping and had been pressuring the Allies for a long time to open up another front. That's what this we is. had, you know, dealt right. with a lot of stuff in North Africa. You know, Italy was. <laughs> yeah, the It'll, soft underbelly of Europe. Yep. Um, as Churchill put it. I right. often wonder what would have happened if um, <laughs> Hitler didn't have to split forces and go protect their sorry asses. Like, there's so many little, like, this like one. Competent thing. Italy yeah. alternate timeline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> competent Italy in an alternate timeline. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that... there's a lot of. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, that's big, big picture stuff. No, that's uh, that's really all. I want to draw the attention to that is that this is like the, oh, yeah. the next front. It's gonna make hitler fight on you know devote his forces in in two different directions. it's gonna split him yeah I, he's, he's I, be... I lit a cigar looked at everybody else and just went now we're gonna make hitler fight on our terms and then like uh rage against the machine started playing and yeah, was... he ripped off his shirt and he's built as fuck <laughs> and jumped on a horse and and turned green and started smashing everything well this is just too many crossovers <laughs> now uh, that poor horse yeah. did, the, did the horse turn green and start smashing everything yes, yes the yeah. hork yeah. the hork is the, the horse hork turns he's green the, he's the whole the the incredible the hork. hulk horse he's the hork <laughs> the incredible hork. anyway i want this right but um i guess uh, hork that, uh, this is this is the way <laughs> as as intrigued as i am by everything we've been talking about we do, do we do need to move on right. and it will segue neatly um <laughs> if this didn't happen if that didn't happen you know what are the alternate timeline of a competent italy if the alternate timeline of blah 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 you if know the where timeline is true where the you know a lot of luck obviously came into effect in, on, on the normandy invasion the fact that the allies were able to move ahead with the invasion despite the weather yeah but on the same hand the weather in you know had effects in other places which affected other things and it was like this this these, these juggling of, of events that i mean ultimately led to normandy being a success but there's just so many like little pieces so you know we want to try and talk about some of the interesting things um yeah, that is generally what we try I, to I, do. Yeah, um, I initially wanted to um, kind of talk about the um, 101st Airborne, the Screaming Eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the things I wanted to mention was um, 
as we move into the actual day or or the, the hours <laughs> leading into the day. I mean, this is like midnight the day. Day day. The, the yeah day day. Which is, day yeah D stands exactly for what it meant. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the day of days. Uh, King of kings. First of his name. King of the Andals, the first one. King of the bridge. One of the first things that needed to happen was that Pegasus Bridge needed to be horse bridge, as uh, some of the Brits called it, um, needed to be taken because there were Panzer tanks on the other side of it, and you know. And I've seen Disney's Hercules. I know how ornery Pegasus can be. But um, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> and in the vein of these, like if these one little tiny events don't happen, like mm-hmm. the events are so very different. Um, when uh yeah you throw pegasus in there things get weird just like in an orgy flying horses so they had to destroy a bridge or take the bridge Which they one? had to take the bridge right because on the other side of the bridge essentially right on the other side of the bridge was a a, a, a platoon several platoons of tanks the rumors are that you know at the time that there were like 350 tanks in hindsight there weren't that many anyway um, like 10 only, tanks or there were only like 349 yeah. there was, there was, tanks would you say 10 million <laughs> <laughs> in no. hindsight there were only 10 million tanks no i wouldn't <laughs> yeah say there were 350 million. there were 10 million <laughs> but uh what I, and this is probably something that most people have heard um but uh one of the you know the first the first gliders which by those the way cool. those gliders are fucking death traps right yes. oh the those ones that yeah oh <laughs> yeah you want you fly <laughs> so them up these, and then let these, them loose and say good luck these bombers these bombers are are towing these wooden <laughs> gliders dropping them full out, of just humans like, and just plummeting them into the earth. Okay, yeah. so I'm not super familiar with these. What what exactly are we doing here? We've so got what you gliding, do is you basically like aircraft. You have these you have these gliders that just look like planes, but there's no engine mm-hmm. in them or anything. They they use okay, them nowadays for like if you go on vacation, you can take a glider trip. But they're like little plane shaped things. You get inside them and you can you can move a lot of troops that way, but there's no engine in them. And what you do is you just tie, you know, them. Crash them into the earth. Yep, yeah, you just, you know, you tie them on the end of another plane, and the other plane takes off, and then you detach, and you just glide down, and you just drop a lot of troops that way, as opposed to via parachute. Paratrooper, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, the do the, um, and I may be getting a little too in-depth with it, but do the gliders have, like, controls as to, like, are they trying to land these, or are they trying to jump out of them? You can, you can, no, way. no, you can kind of maneuver the wings, so you can kind of steer, okay. but there's no yeah. engine, there's no propelling force, you're sure. at the mercy yeah, of nature, and what, and no, you don't jump no, out of it, you land, and then everyone gets out, and then you try to either hide the glider or destroy it or whatever, you don't want people finding it, but, like, sure, okay, but you try to find a nice... The meadow to yeah, to and if you can't in. find one, well, <laughs> well you then you're kind of screwed. Or you I did some not, Germans I did not know about something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, just hit that group of Germans over there. Maybe they'll help out. So we had kamikazes of our own. <laughs> Bonds. Okay. Right. Well, so, I didn't know about that. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So the one of the first, and like I said, this might be more common knowledge, but I thought it was fascinating. Um, so like the first, the first landers that go in, you know, they, 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 they're met with lots of wind and unexpected fire in a lot of ways. Um, and so they drop, so the bombers, <laughs> wow, are that's really weird. I don't know. There was a lot of unexpected fire in this war zone. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> well, shit. I didn't think someone was shooting at us. <laughs> they drop these, they drop these landers, the, these gliders. And I mean, like, like Chris said, they're basically just planes made out of wood with nothing. And so there's all these men just hunkered in this piece of wood that's just gliding down. And land is a strong word. Yeah. yeah they don't really land. land these things. They just kind of crash them into the ground. Like these things are moving at generally like anywhere between like 50 to 100 miles an hour when they just careen into the ground. I hope they're wearing and then, helmets and knee pads. <laughs> everyone and scrambles out of them because, you know. If they're still alive and can move. Yeah, yeah it's, it's such a wild thing to, 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 to read about. And so one of the first ones that lands there, they land like 50 yards within Pegasus Bridge. And um, mm-hmm. Lieutenant Dan Brotheridge, you know, he's the man who is kind of known as um, the individual who fired the first shot for the Allies. Uh, on D-Day and was also the first casualty on D-Day. Um, first in, first out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's yeah. that's kind of a D-Day theme, kind of right. And uh, well, ultimately, his 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 squad, his 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 you know team squad platoon, whatever. They end up uh, team you know, squad platoon? taking taking. It's a great team. Um, it's a great trivia name. The Pegasus Bridge. Ultimately, all to say. Um, they knew that these panzers were coming, right? Mm-hmm. 
And this is what I think is wild. So, um, Major John Howard, um, he was kind of, he was two first names. Yeah. Major John <laughs> Howard. He's, he's a very, very popular World War II figure, especially surrounding the Normandy invasion. Um, they had taken the bridge, um, but they knew that the, that, well, they expected reinforcements to be coming. Reinforcements ended up not being able to come for like two extra days. So oh. these panzers start rolling in. So they, they hear, Sorry, man, they see, we're busy. they know we these got things work. are coming. <laughs> and <laughs> have to work uh, late. The boss is really these, only about these reports. These tanks start rolling in, and all that these guys have are these little things called um, spoons, piots. Uh, they're these little, and these things are piots. Yeah, they're they're the worst. Like you read about them, and they're like, "This is the worst." They're the, they're these anti tank weapons. Oh, yeah. But they are like like suspicious quote weapon. They're you know they're yeah well yeah exactly weapon. because they're yeah because they're modified after like you know our an artillery weapon, but they're sort of like crudely constructed uh, into being handheld. It's a mortar and, turned sideways. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That'd be great if that was a bitch <laughs> meaning, uh, that's sir. Kinda, that's just a mortar badass. turned sideways. No, it isn't. It's a completely new <laughs> weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different weapon. Yeah, and that's the thing. They just kind of shrunk it down and then turned it sideways. And so they shoot these little, like, three-pound uh, charges, but they are wildly inaccurate. Yeah. Sure. Wildly I mean, inaccurate. Mortars are supposed to fall, not be yeah. shot. They should have um, like, They should have given everyone those wrenches from the Battlefield games that the, the engineers use, where you can just walk up to an enemy <laughs> tank and just go, ee, 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 and then yeah, they blow or up. borrowed some Molotov cocktails from the Finns. <laughs> yeah, right. Um... And so, Major uh, Major John Howard and his, and, his, and his team are you know hearing these Panzers coming in, so they like hide in the bushes and shit like that. And they've got one of these piots amongst them all. So you know they might everybody have take a turn, it, but they've got one gun. <laughs> and so this, this, piot, man. this tank is is you know chugging down the road, and they're just sitting they're there, they're driving. waiting. They wait till they get it literally as close as possible because, like I said, these things are wildly inaccurate. John Howard shoots it and he d he hits it and he destroys the Panzer. Well, there's two other ones behind it, and Panzers are yeah. notoriously now, like well armored machines. Like they're not like our Sherman right. were, where you can yeah, just get them anywhere and they tanks, blow up. For sure. <laughs> right? Yeah, but as soon as the ones behind it see that this one has been destroyed, they the Germans immediately assume that there's like some body tank like, force or something. Yeah, so a much larger force that is defending this, and they book it. Huh? <laughs> that that awesome. comes back into the kind of luck thing because exactly yeah, if exactly. they kept pushing, that that was over there. That was it. It was I mean, over. It was over. They like, figure if, out where if, that Piat's firing from, and it's done. And that was it. That would have been the end. They would have taken the, the Germans would have taken back Pegasus Bridge, and and I mean, Normandy as a whole could have been a completely different story. Yeah, because they just start wow, sweeping tanks into the place, and yeah, mm. and. Yeah, it's just it's so wild that like that one that one little grenade that happened to hit and scared the other Panzer away happened to like just like completely change the course of the entire Imagine thing. being and that course, tank crew and finding out later like wait, it was just like <laughs> damn it. It's just, <laughs> it's just yeah. one little bitch ass <laughs> British fucking anti-tank gun. No, nah, man, it was it. it was all part of Operation Bodyguard. That was uh it was all yeah, planned man. that way. And the other thing I thought just in regard to Panzer since we're talking about them most of the Panzer divisions had to have been um, directly ordered by by Hitler to move. Is that something he had centralized under himself for some uh -huh. stupid reason? I could see that. Uh -huh. yeah. Gosh. Don't do so drugs, kids. When, so when... These are like uber Germans, you know, or whatever. He probably had a term for it. Um, yeah, you order your when tank to come pick the you air up. For <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, if uh, I would totally take an Uber tank I would. somewhere. <laughs> Uber Panzer edition. Let's see, there's Uber, there's Uber X, there's Uber Black, and, and Uber Panzer. Yeah, Uber Black. But um, when, you know, w when the German army as a whole finally started getting word that, like, all this, that all the Normandy stuff was happening, um, no one had the courage to wake Hitler up. <laughs> He's gonna oh. be so moody, you guys. He was he was asleep at the time, and no one had the courage to wake him up. 
And so he was the only one who was able to give the order. Well, him or Rommel, and Rommel also couldn't have been found because he was with his family at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, no one, no one had the courage to wake him up. He was the only one who had the courage, or he was the only one who had the the the, the authority to issue these 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 Panzer divisions to move. So they sat for hours and hours and hours and hours. And part of that too um, was that, and I I read this somewhere, uh, I think, uh, was they thought that Normandy itself was a diversion away from the, The like the fake attacks, right? Yeah. So that, that slowed any German Mm -hmm. response for a long time. They had been fooled. They're like, yeah. who? Who's attacking Normandy? That's that's dumb. Yeah, They're that going for poor de blah blah. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I read all these stories Norway. of the of of some of the living accounts of those those German engineers and 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 soldiers who were parts of those tank divisions, like knowing that there was something happening, like they were they were aware that Normandy was being stormed, but they were just sitting there, just waiting for the order. Mm. That's crazy. And so they're like, they know that they could be there and they could be helping, but they had to wait for the order from Hitler himself. Well, and so they're just sitting there just waiting. Yeah, th- I guess at that point, like, fear both <laughs> paralyzes them and motivates them, you know? It's like, what if we move wild. and Hitler is upset? Well, then we're screwed, you know? Right, yeah. So, they, so. Yeah, everything just stalled. Everything just yeah. froze. That's crazy. And that's another one of those, like, crazy, like, luck scenarios. Gotta love your crazy dictators, man. It's they get so everyone crazy. afraid of them. It's- it wild, reminds me of the wild. movie Chris and I watched, it, The Death of Stalin. The Death of Stalin. And like, he's, he's, uh, they think he's died or something. They're like, check on him. No, you check on him. I'm not yeah, going to touch, touch him. He's, yeah. uh, I don't want to be in here if, he, if, if, if he's, uh, if he is alive and he, you know, thinks that we saw him pass out or something. And they're, <laughs> Jeez. they're just like not doing anything with his corpse. And even though while. it's delivered completely comedically, it's all based on like actual events. Like they were yeah. afraid to go in the <laughs> end of Stalin's. <laughs> I mm. Grady and I would probably both recommend that movie very highly to anyone. Yes, <laughs> I really, really uh, like the death. Sure. We were really, really drunk at my place, and I was like, "Hey, I've heard good things about this movie. Let's watch it." <laughs> we did. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's crazy. That yeah, the Panzer divisions wouldn't move because no one would wake Hitler up. That's uh, right. That's and that, that, I didn't that know. turns out to be like one of the major reasons. <laughs> whatever i wish it could uh, even be culminating reasons to a more extreme yeah, it, like it, 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 i wish it, he had it like very well up. could have been i wish he had a very major reason why normandy was successful was because there were so many hours that there was so much of the german army was just stalled because no one had courage to wake hitler up well, i wish they had woken him up but like took it really slowly because you'll know how he is when he wakes up just give him some time <laughs> like he has to have <laughs> cereal first he has to like some... Some coffee, some calming music. Well, he needs to have his morning. (laughs) Wake him up with some lavender. No, no, no. He needs his morning. Let him wake up naturally. He needs his morning painkillers and shit. His massive drug addiction due to the pain he was in and his stomach problems and so uh, like. Oh yeah. What what drug wakes you up? Cocaine. These strange cocktail of a bunch of amphetamines and stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just saying like those aren't things you take when you're. uh, Yeah, it doesn't matter. Those aren't (laughs) things that you take when you. You can't tell the Hitler. You can't tell the Hitler. You can't tell the the viewer bad news until he's had his amphetamines. Oh, okay. So you wake him up. He's one of those coffee people, but with amphetamines. By the way, (laughs) he has a he he has a yeah meth. You know how people have those coffee mugs that say like. Uh, don't talk to me until I've had my call. You know, really stupid shit like that. What if he had like yeah. a little like a like a syringe that had <laughs> like a syringe that's like <laughs> a syringe don't talk to me until I've syringe. had my meth. I don't know. <laughs> I don't deal with problems until I've had my codeine. <laughs> my codeine. <laughs> yeah. And they were out that day, so no one woke Hitler up. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that's a good. Oh. Oh. Interesting twist, Josh. Wake me up, wake me up inside. Wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, so, uh, what's next do we want to talk about well, that happened? Um, so, we've landed now at Normandy. And, and we shot us some tanks. We shot yeah. We shot a tank. To, Scared them, to, slash, to they couldn't move anyway. <laughs> One of the things that, that the, the weather obviously caused... Um, you know, lots of issues. Um, Are so you going to talk about the tides? Well, sort of. So okay. the the well, that's fine. Go ahead. So there were lots of bombings. Obviously, we talked about that before. There were lots of bombings 
that um, happened before the actual physical invasion of Normandy. Uh, yeah. Um, well, a lot of those bombings didn't go very well. Um, in yeah, one of them of, like missed completely, right? Yes. So some bombings hit uh, towns that were supposed to be evacuated, Oops. and the most notable of all. The one that was supposed to strike the defenses of Omaha Beach didn't yeah. hit at all, which led to the slaughter and the very popular sort of canonical uh, events of, of Normandy uh, on Omaha Beach. That's that's mm-hmm. a big whoops, man. Well, weren't yeah. they trying to not hit their own troops or something, so they were dropping early? Uh, there's, you know what? The, I tried to I tried to confirm how those missed specifically and mm-hmm. apparently there's a lot of conflicting results on like why that happened oh. like whether it was user error or something or weather yeah. or yeah. misinformation or like grady said like an attempt to you know for, an attempt for to safety yeah. yeah apparently there's there's lots of different things and no one's really 100 percent sure as to why the omaha beach bombings were so far off because they were miles off Jesus. Oh yeah, and cloud cover or something too, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. cloud cover, difficult and fog, to see. And blah, blah, hey, blah, Captain, yeah, I mean, there's uh, lots of things. The beach is like 15 miles back yeah. that way. Why are we still? Well, don't you see all these clouds, son? I don't know where we are. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's... Anyway, it, it, it is. Still I, don't a, know, I don't know if that joke is in poor taste or not. And some <laughs> five years ago, too soon. It's a sexquincentennial, uh, Chris. Sex quint semi sex quint sex 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 quint semi sex no man that's semi great sex quint centennial centennial just see, you just take Grady, whatever Grady just I am said, the very model of a centennial centennial there we go yeah anyway but yeah the weather fucked a lot of shit up it did uh, but it know, also it, it was delayed. just good enough for them to actually do it um yeah like they had planned like to try maybe again on the 18th or 20th and the weather was way worse mm-hmm. right that was one thing i fa- failed to mention earlier it was like the next opportunity the weather ended up being like complete shit so they would have had to wait even longer to oh. know, so. and like in hindsight like well yeah in hindsight sucked. this was like the only time to do it unless <laughs> maybe we should launch today That's no it's too hot today can we do it tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me and mowing the yard. <laughs> it's always going to be too hot, Grady. You live in Texas. Yeah. Yep. It's not going to get any better until like it's not like your grass January of next cool. year. Yeah. When your grass isn't growing then anyway. Yeah. I know all these things, guys. <laughs> yeah. None of this information it doesn't me. stop me from saying this is too hot. Uh, well, um, if we want to move on to something else. Uh, some of the technology we thought was pretty interesting. Yeah, right? we talked about some of like the the tanks and stuff, and you know, while Omaha was was not successful, in large part because some of these like really crazy tanks, um, were unable to perform the way they were supposed to on some of the other beaches. I think, oh god, I want to say Juno and Sword specifically; those inflatable tanks were pretty successful well yeah they did not like the decoy inflatable tanks right but like yeah, yeah, yeah. regular tanks but with a like amphibious like assault capability inflatable attachment thing yeah mm-hmm. is that what you were talking about josh well that and the mulberry harbors i i read more about those oh, yeah. than the tanks those the, are cool too the, the portable uh harbors that they built uh, off the shore of the normandy invasion were kind of interesting to me like apparently yeah, yeah, yeah. well before the um the invasion itself they sailed a bunch of these ships over and sunk them you know scuttled them on purpose to cr- start creating these wave breakers i forget what uh, there's a word for it but breakwater uh, things breakwaters yeah so yeah. like to make like an easier harbor for once they'd storm the beach they could bring in more troops and equipment so they brought all these ships over there and sunk them and then they started sending over like these giant you know pylon type things um and and sunk them to basically create uh, a harbor essentially yeah uh so yeah so they were they took these ships over and sunk them and they called those gooseberries which was interesting yeah what are the um, and then uh they brought these other things over which just essentially look like giant uh concrete like platform type things and they sunk those for for breakwaters as well 
and mm-hmm. they started the bombardons. Uh, yeah, what, what, what were they called, Grady? Bombardons. Bombardons. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> yeah, what he said. <clears throat> and um, they basically built this harbor. Uh, uh, they brought these like roadway, floating roadways that were floating on po- pontoons over to attach to these breakwaters and run all the way into the beach, so that the ships could stay, you know, far away from the beach, uh, out in the, you know, the. Uh, deeper water and offload all these troops and munitions and, 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 uh, and deliver you know, supplies yeah, yeah vehicles and stuff yeah mm-hmm. um so uh yeah and the floating roadways were na- codenamed whales and beetles so they had all these weird little these are Fucking mulberry breads, docks dude. with gooseberries and whales and beetles i don't know why they had to <laughs> name these things it's like, just a beetle song um, man. and then <laughs> and then uh you know where the um we delivered our beetle to the gooseberry yeah, the 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 heads of the piers were called spuds. So, uh, but I just thought it was interesting. They they hauled this stuff over and made these floating, essentially docks, uh, you know, uh, harbors to offload all this stuff. Uh, the one, the Mulberry A, I want to say there's Mulberry A and Mulberry B at two different um, uh, beaches, and Mulberry A was the one the the Americans used, and a storm ended up screwing it up because they didn't anchor it to the seafloor. And then Mulberry B ended up being used, you know, pretty heavily. Uh, Collusion. But they kind of, I think, after the fact, Grady, you might have done more recent reading on this uh, right before we casted, kind of determined that it wasn't the most effective way. It was just just as effective to just land straight on the beach and offload stuff as yeah. it was in these Mulberry harbors. But the concept was cool to me. Yeah, it ended up being, you know, more efficient the way the Americans did it kind of without this. Um, but I, I guess the, so the argument would go like they thought the Germans were going to fuck up the harbors or, right. you know, that they were trying to capture. They were going to sabotage it. Those and Germans everything. always fucking up harbors, man. And, uh, you know, and also they had to wait till they, they kind of did, harbor. I think. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, well, they did, but it was kind of it was it wasn't not it was not a lot. It wasn't crucial. Um, yeah they didn't completely destroy the place or anything they captured it sooner than they thought they would and so it just ended up being like oh well i guess we didn't really need all this yeah but if uh, it had gone differently and they didn't have it they would yeah these would have been essential for sure yeah so it was a good backup plan i guess or you go the american route and just build everything to where you could just crash it on the beach and go exactly (laughs) but uh yeah it was interesting um and like grady said they ended up uh not very long after d-day capturing the port of antwerp which they then used instead of these mulberry uh, i've been there don't call me a twerp i've been to Antwerp. it was fun but a couple of little uh things i read about it i thought were interesting um, the Ghost Army, which I don't know if we've mentioned. Oh, that's was, the I army think... that Aragon in Lord of the Rings got. Yeah, yeah, for. but yeah. it's the American version, I think. Yeah. Um, but they were, you know, it's espionage a bunch of cowboys. type people. And uh, they went and built <laughs> a fake Mulberry Harbor that just basically had lights on at night so that it would draw fire away from one of the real It would draw in harbors. a lot of moths. Yeah. <laughs> and, and moths as well. Um, well, and then, they're trying to get across bridges further inland. They don't want the uh, Mothman to go and... The Mothman! Yeah, moth he is especially <laughs> good man. at destroying bridges. That's we why know. they didn't build the bridge. <laughs> so, yeah, that's exactly why Mothman would have been all over that. Like, I, dude, and then, that bridge is way too long. I ain't letting that thing exist. I'm taking out <laughs> smaller bridges for less. <laughs> 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 that's his whole thing Mothman has a standard yeah her moth <laughs> your bridge is too big you need to spend less money on it um mm. but yeah so the the whales and beetles the actual floating bridge the portion beetle whale f- war of... of the mulberries they after the after the war they ended up using those to repair a bunch of destroyed bridges in France like that were destroyed due to the the war. So I thought that was kind of cool. Huh. Like that they ended up cool. actually using part of them, you know, to make bridges uh, or you know, repair them. Hey man, uh, Europe, we we so. build bridges here, man. We don't knock them down. Or, no, we just move bridges we've already we built move after bridges, we knock man. bridges down. <laughs> We knock <laughs> other bridges down to move them. To move bridges bri- on those bridges, man. We just, we, I, you we, got it. We like bridges, man. We just really like bridges. We like we're all, bridges. We like we're all Jeff bridges. bridges, man. We like Jeff bridges. 
All of us are <laughs> Jeff Bridges. <laughs> we do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I like Jeff Bridges. We like that's London like Bridges. Your opinion, man. All right, and that the... was talking Jeff Bridges. So uh, um, that those were the Mulberry Harbors. Those are pretty cool. Yeah. On the tank front, are there? Does anyone have like a favorite of these weird tanks of Hobart's funnies? Um, uh, I think the most effective were the ones that like find found the crab mines, right? Yes, like the, the crab... legendary crab mines. I don't yeah, know. the the uh, the crab, uh, the Sherman tank with a mine flail on the back. Yeah, yeah. So the it's just like cylinder. this. Odd. Yeah, this windmill of like whatever the heck they attach to it. That are just trying to like destroy, I guess. No, the, the mines, it was their special weapon. Okay, they go over a certain platform and then the windmill spins, and whichever special weapon is on the the picture that shows up at the top is the one they get to use once. Yeah. Also, it's right. hard to get your golf ball past the windmill. I don't know sometimes. what you would do to. I, I don't think you're trying to detonate the mine unless it's fine for a tank to like detonate a mine in front of it. Well, I mean, that's the thing. That's what I thought. I, like I said, I, well, like I didn't say, but I'm saying now, um, I haven't read a whole lot about each individual tank, just kind of what they did. And I just assumed that that tank was like, I don't care about no mines. We're going through here and blowing them up. No, it yeah. was like, it was, yeah, I mean, sort of. But it was also to like, like make uh, fucking, what's the word I'm looking for? Trenches easier to dig and shit? Yeah. But is that, why Why would they call I don't know. Why'd they call it the crab anyway? <laughs> Just because. Because <laughs> it dug. Crabs. That That's the first thing you think of when you, what I mean, is my, this tank digs. Let's call it the crab. I mean, it is I mean, digging the, into what, what, a beach. What, yeah, what other, what other animal digs into a beach? Turtles. I don't know, man. Like, yeah, sea turtles. Call it the sea turtle. That's way yeah, cool. the no. sea turtle. They had a they bulldozer one. They had, you know, things for kind of constructor type things. But <laughs> I think that one was actually just mainly used for Minecraft. It must be that you for know, Minecraft? if you blow it up in front of the in front of the like more armored part of your tank, then you should be fine. You know, it's it's it, it, as long as you're not driving over anti. They're they're like anti personnel, right? They're not anti yeah. armored vehicle. So. I like the carpet layer. Yeah, um, that one's. It seems frivolous, right? But it is important to get heavy it, things yeah. across it, the beach. It like turns out that it was actually like vital, but like it looks. Is dumb. that the fascine carrier or whatever? It's like no, no, this no, thing that like lays down the bobbin, this, like it, the, oh, bobbin. the bobbin. Yeah, yeah, it like lays down like this. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Matting, a red carpet matting that across one. the beach, <laughs> uh, so that the heavy so the queen, heavier the heavy <laughs> so that the heavy <laughs> eventually the queen's coming to know. But yeah, or else can, other things can, can just sink into the fucking not sand sink and in crap. The, in the sand, yeah. yeah. Oh, the king at the time, actually. Uh, the fascines were cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. Those seemed um, really... The ones that the engineering crews were using, I particularly liked. Uh, the assault vehicle... The, these all... Uh, the bobbin and the fascine are both of them. Are, are both in that category. But like the engineers I'd would like just come the... up with random shit to strapped to him you know like oh, well. <laughs> it's like okay i've got this giant tank how can i utilize it to make my job easier <laughs> yeah exactly, like that. exactly. <laughs> i will <laughs> cover it strap the bodies of there. german orphans to scare my enemy i mean which is just like engineering 101 it's like how can i complete this task the laziest way possible what can we do let me use give me some tank. duct tape and like a couple of tubes it's just great. I mean, so yeah, yeah, there's the one just a couple park, of tubes, which is really cool, uh, which just had like folded up ramps on it, and so you just drive the tank to somewhere just... and unfold the ramps on it. You yeah, can do you sick can, kick like, flips off of it. Over it. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could. Let's let's jump over it. Yeah, you just launch your launch, uh, launch your Hot Wheels on it. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. That's I mean that's right. vital. Yeah, I mean, and, and like some of these, you know, you look at um, the the fast scene in particular. It's like this dude just kind of came up with this, like at the moment that it yep. was needed, right? Like he, he was he was just sitting there being like, "Huh, I really need." It'd be really cool if I could, uh, you know, carry this shit like across these weird gaps we've got. And Foresight be damned. Oh. <laughs> Necessity some other I'll just, invention. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just strap it to a tank. <laughs> Those things can pull a lot, I bet. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, with with the tanks, I think that was the whole thing with all the tanks is you just load a bunch of shit on them because they're going to be going anyway, and they can just carry. Hey a bunch guys, of shit. how do we transport all these prisoners? Just strap them onto the tanks, man. Just strap them onto a tank. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, they'll they'll think twice about shooting at the tank if it's strapped with prisoners. 
Probably not, though, because they were, like, they were Nazis or something, right? I don't know. Who was fighting this war? <laughs> not, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this would be uh, the Confederates <laughs> and the no the Mongolians. Oh, well, the Confederate Mongolian War of 1915, yeah. and 1944. then again 1984. Uh, I remember now. Yeah, exactly. The Took only a long uh, recess there, but then they got upset with each other. But then the teachers called everyone in to go back to class, <laughs> <laughs> and they, they quit. <laughs> Uh, I really love the swimming Shermans. Like I said, those, those, those were interesting for sure. That's that is wild. That sounds like a um, like a what are they? What are What's they? Called? What are they called? The synchronized it's swimming the team. Swimming the swimming sham. <laughs> the swimming sham. <laughs> or like I the just, Sherman High School water polo team. Mine's a little. <laughs> they, mine's yeah. a little catchier, like, but okay. Yeah. yeah. This they once again they just this is another example of they're like huh all right. So we're on the, in the water. Okay, so we need to... Let's put a floaty around, around a tank. How do we get the tank to... Let's just fucking... Yeah, exactly. Let's just strap a gigantic intertube onto this tank. Hey, it works for everyone else. You and know? then All everyone right. would like ride in the intertube part like on top of the tank, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it was, like get... a, it was like a boat. Then you get yeah, a, a boat around the sides, and it would, raft. and then you just yeah. be in it like. Ugh. And then you get a separate <laughs> tank for your cooler, and you all. <laughs> I love this. This is great. This is uh, we we should do this. Uh, you feel, yeah, summer. you got you got your one tank for for all your all your friends. You got the other tank full of ice, full of ice and beer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. right. No glass though. No, no glass. We're civilized. That one's cool. <laughs> the other one that I like is the flamethrower one because they just oh, took the machine dude, gun out and put a awesome. flamethrower on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that one's awesome. It says um, that the crocodile was an effective assault weapon whose threat could induce enemy troops to retreat or surrender. Uh, it was used so successfully yeah. against bunkers that many surrendered after for the first ranging shots. I was reading. I mean, about, yeah, right. I was reading about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the were used in World War Two the other day. Yeah, where they were like, yeah, I mean, obviously they were like clearing out bunkers, but think about it like this. It wasn't necessarily like getting hit by the flames. It was one, intense heat, and two, those things just eat the oxygen out of bunkers. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah I would never have thought of yeah, that. Yeah, they just wipe them clean, so you suffocate. <laughs> them. You either run out and burn yeah. or run out the back or suffocate. Like it's That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's this was kind of this was kind of the first big use of the flamethrower on the on the battlefield, mm-hmm. right? Like the just World War Two, World War Two well, in general. I mean, you saw more tank, individual yeah. uses of them for personnel in the Pacific Theater because they had so much, yeah. and those are primarily Forward, used for yeah. deforestation. Um, right. Sure, but well, yes. you just have to think like the idea carried over. They were oh, like, man. man. Over in the Pacific, they're using all kinds of flamethrowers. Let's put one on a tank. I would much <laughs> rather. Bunkers, I would you know. <laughs> much rather be in charge of having a flamethrower on a tank than having one strapped to my back. Yes. Oh my yes, god. Yes, for sure. Oh my god. Yeah. I would not much like less... to be in either one though. I mean, yeah. you're also in a tank which can can blow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Correct. But it's, it's not great either inside. way. But I take tank over over just running around. No, I, I agree. Well, with it's that. In, well, the giant you know, we, we're doubling back a little bit onto the innovation and sort of the just general need to innovate for sake of Normandy. You know, the the um, the battleships. You know, they kind of had they had refitted. The, ah, that's not the right word. They had kind of altered the 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 guns. On these battleships because they know they knew that they needed them to, they needed them to be like crazy crazy accurate. Yeah. In the case that they would have been able to be used, <clears throat> and that ends up being one of the main reasons that you know the Omaha Beach attack is even successful at all was because the what was it the USS McCook? <clears throat> probably. Sounds I right. think. Does that sound right? Okay. Sounds yeah, I like think a it's thing the, I, that probably existed. <laughs> the USS McCook is one of the ones that was, like, the captain was like, hey, we got to give these boys support. And they're like, oh, the, the tide isn't high enough yet. We're too close to the shore. And he's like, fuck it. We'll ram this motherfucker into the shore if we have to. And he That's pulls crazy. it up, like, way close to the shore and ends up blasting these, you know, with these giant cannons they have on these these battleships into these buildings. Mean, 
I, yeah, I, that's right. I heard I no, heard one of nuts. these um I heard one of the one of my, you know, little stories I've been I've been reading, one of the Germans retelling the story. He he said, um it seemed as though the the the, the battleships could put those shells in between the separation of the pillboxes oh like in God. the window of a pillbox he said it seemed like they were so accurate they were able to put it inside a pillbox and so the fact that the mccook was willing to move itself that close to shore and and, and potentially run aground and lose the ship right to 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 bomb across the uh I mean, Omaha that's, looking out, there. I that's mean, looking out for your guys man, on the ground, for sure. War doesn't Omaha have, Beach probably wouldn't have been successful without that. War doesn't have enough mad lads <clears throat> like that anymore, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. No well, way. War is a lot different these days as well. That's true. <laughs> but, yeah, you um, just to, to touch on it, because I meant to touch on it earlier, you mentioned the tides. I read that the tides uh, on one of the beaches, it may have been Omaha, Probably uh, came in so fast that yeah, like yeah. the, Omaha, the yeah. troops yeah. on the beach couldn't stay where they were at, even if they yes. had cover. They had to move yeah. up yep. the beach no matter what, yep. or be to back avoid in the drowning. Water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I mean, that's those, just another so crazy even, weather thing, you know. Well, it's because they came so, in at low tide. They yeah. Uh, well, that was the, the plan Germans all had along, anticipated high tide. So, yeah. They came um, in at the end of low tide. Yeah. So yeah. Like, they didn't get where they wanted. They got in on the tail yeah. end of where they wanted. Right. Which and uh, so if they had been, you know, they were in cover, they had to move because the tide was coming and the thing that really sucked was anyone who had been injured, most of those men just drowned. The tide was moving so quickly that they were not able to get themselves to safety fast enough. They just drowned in the high, in the rising tide. Yeah, and the low tide thing was by design, you know, so they could see it was. obstacles yeah. yes. and stuff as they were landing folks. Were obstacles. But the Germans had the fact that they got delayed those. from where they wanted to be, yeah. you know. It wasn't kind of, a bad mm-hmm. idea because the Germans had, that's why you have those hedgehogs, the Czech hedgehogs out those, there. Those yeah. things, those, yeah. uh, the little, that's to rip the yeah. bottom of the boat. X right. star things. Mm hmm. Yeah. The things that you see on the Normandy beach. Yeah, the little out of the water. Cross, those little fucking the crust, metal things. The crossed the iron bar thing. Yeah. Yeah. Those, yeah those the hedgehogs. Things. The things that yeah. look exactly like hedgehogs. Hey, that's sort what of. they're called. Gotta go fast. <laughs> they look that's different, they but they were gonna. <laughs> the tide's coming in. <laughs> You're too slow. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, no. That's good. Uh, yeah, so that like hedgehog that. just Very dark. mocking a, a shot U.S. soldier as the tide comes in. Over. <laughs> hey, it could Come have been on, a British soldier up. or a Canadian. Uh, or a Canadian Mother. soldier. No, Sonic would be was, super upbeat about US. that Sonic or anything. Sonic would waste time Canadian, with Canadians. But... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Anyway, sorry to our wow. Canadian listenership. I, I'm not That's I, plummeting. From I'm sorry as well. I deal sorry, with so sorry. many. I have been dealing with Canadian legal sorry. bullshit, sorry. and learn, it's like the least sorry. helpful group of people. <laughs> Their bureaucracy, but the is most apologetic. Bad. What? Well, I'm sure if you sorry. tell them that, they'll probably be really sorry. Sorry. Figure it out. <laughs> trying, man. Been trying for two years. So yeah, that's a that's another interesting Here point too. The tide, I forgot about that. Yeah, uh, I meant to mention it earlier when we were talking weather and stuff. But yeah, that that was crazy to me. One of the clips I'm gonna pull, and I might I'll stick it somewhere probably. Oh, you'll here, stick maybe it somewhere. Here ish. Um, <laughs> is from uh, no. Oh yeah, Robert Sales. Um, he he recounts his uh, his experience on. He he has a he has a he has a really, frankly, haunting story um, regarding his experience on Omaha Beach and how you know he 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 made it to the seawall, but he didn't he wasn't part of the individuals that you know ended up eventually storming up to the top of the cliffs and you know being part of uh, you know. They, they destroyed their artillery up he there. He wasn't the main yeah, character right. in Medal of Honor, basically. Yeah. Yeah, sure. He was... He was uh, He was one of the guys you give covering fire for? Yeah. He was pulling bodies okay. out of the rising tide, mm. um, trying to find people that may or may not be alive. When that ramp went down, and the captain went off. By the time he hit the end of the runway, he was full of bullets. They had a sort of crossfire from two different guns up in the cliff. Two other men went off. One of them was a friend of mine. He was hit. 
uh, I was the fourth man. And this was the first time I'd ever been under fire. It was the first time anybody tried to kill me. And when the excitement of being scared to death, I fell off to the side and I went straight to the bottom. Now this water was cold. It was cold as blue blazes. And when I got up, got my feet on the bottom and give a push and I come up and the captain was hollering, I'm here to help me. And I started towards him. I was maybe 10, 12 feet from him. But then I seen uh, blood water just bubbling up red. And I said, man, I better save my own life. There's no need. And at this time, I looked back, and every, all the rest of them coming off the boat were being just cut down like you would. I, didn't, I hadn't counted on this. I was the only survivor. There were 30 men on board that boat, and I was the only man to get off alive. I finally got to the edge of the water, and I heard somebody holler my name, and it was my sergeant. Somehow he had made it, but he was badly wounded. And he raised up, hollering at me to come help him. And when he raised up on his elbow, a sniper up in the cliffs spotted him. and hit him right in the head with that telescope rifle, you know, just like your deer hunt. And when that bullet hit his head, he just exploded. What was left of his head flopped down in the sand. And I knew there was no need going over there. So I buried my face and head, put my hands over my head and everything the best I could because I figured he'd seen me too. He'd almost bound to see me. And I just waited there for my shot to come. But somehow, evidently, he got distracted by bigger and better targets or something. And he didn't pull that trigger on me. And I started to crawl, just inch at a time. And I would peep up and see a dead body. And I'd crawl to that dead body and lay beside him for a while. During this time, I passed body parts, a little everything can't imagine what was laying there. I run upon men that were not dead, but were just blown apart. It's just amazing how sometime you can live being blown up as bad as you were. And they were screaming and hollering, but there was nothing I could do for them. I just crawled by. Jeez, it's shocking. It's, yeah, it's really like, that's not something you think about as how many bodies were there on the beach as the tide rose yeah and it's... i i heard uh they had interviewed a guy uh local news here in east texas i think it was local um and he was saying like you know all the medics would be tending the guys you know trying to keep them alive and they were in right. way worse shape than the guys they were attending <clears throat> you know they're just yeah doing their job till like their very end instead of you know, no yeah very... no it wasn't to keep them alive it was to make her final moments not well, as either way, as could have been. Yeah, here's some morphine. Well, I just mean yeah. like the the what from what he said, the medics were so screwed up, and they were still tending to guys that were less screwed up than they were. You know what I mean? Uh, so, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Still trying to help yeah. them, yeah. even though they were, even though they yeah, knew they were of, pretty much goners mm -hmm. at that point. And I, this is, yeah, I'm repeating myself. Another, I don't remember who, I don't remember which of the individuals I I uh, listened to said this but um he you know he he was on the beach on omaha beach you know trying to figure out what to do i mean just you know at that point i mean it's such a sensory overload and you've got so much just panic and stuff and he saw one of his buddies fall nearby and one of the medics run out to go help him and then the medic got shot and the medic was down and that at that point he was thinking like oh huh this is uh Yep, this is real. Yeah, they just shot the medic. That's definitely like, a uh, <laughs> nobody's spared type situation. Yeah. yeah, they just gunned down that medic, and and so this is killer. This be is real situation. Yeah, this is real. Yeah, it's wild. It's such a there's just so many yeah. haunting stories about it. Um, that brings to mind the 
opening scene of that second episode in uh, Band of Brothers, yeah. where they're parachuting in or whatever, yeah. and the, or the, just the they see other planes Private just Ryan. like go down, yeah, and people just on fire falling out of them and stuff, and uh, I was, yeah. it's um, shocking to hear. I mean, I, I really recommend anyone who has the, I guess, the stomach or interest for it. I don't know if you can find firsthand accounts of really any of this stuff i mean not just d-day not just the invasion of normandy but as i kind of went through this a lot of the world war ii stuff specifically it's sobering i think is is a good word for it um we kind of mm-hmm. forget i guess in in, in you know gloss because over. yeah 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 because obviously you know there was so much and we've had like Vietnam, and uh, I don't want to cut you off here, Stephen. So keep going. No, you're good. Point. Well, you're good. My, my point was going to be that, I mean, I'm, you know, my my grandfather. I was very young when he died, but he, you know, hinted as much as you can to a child of of the atrocities sure. that he experienced during World War II. Uh, and he I was, was just thought you were going to say committed, and I was like, my I kind of tightened up. Well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't think he told me that as much, but just like the the things he experienced were, you know, crazy weighted, you know, had a lot of gravity to them. And I was a kid and that's all he could tell me. Um, but I think a lot of that gets lost because maybe it's not talked about as much or they didn't talk about it as much because of the generation that it was um, and possible, uh, you know, I'm speculating all of this here. Of possible course. stigmas of you know opening up on that kind of thing and then well, well Viet- you, vietnam happened and then you know that's both um closer in our memory and, and just as atrocious you know the things that happened there and maybe the stigma started to lift on that a little bit because of the the age that it was or something maybe i don't know like I said, I, that's I, all I, speculation I, in my experience I've, I've noticed that people from both wars don't typically like talking about certain things i don't know like um yeah the majority for sure i don't know my grandfather because you know uh both my grandfathers fought in world war ii one in the pacific i think he was on a i think he was in the navy and the other one he never really did anything bad. He was never really involved in anything major. But I mean, you know, near the end of his life, he told a story he had never told before, and cried about it. And like, I don't know, like it's just when people get older, they might they open it up and want to let know, go of some of that stuff. And I've seen people, you know, I know people who fought in Nam that you know typically won't talk about certain things unless like a point in the conversation triggers them into doing so, and then they get really upset. I don't know. I, I think. Yeah. I th- sure. It's it, it's hard for everyone to talk about. I was just thinking of like the people that experienced it as a whole. It may be easier. It, it may be easier nowadays to speak about it than back in the day. Um, you know, once they came back from the war. But Maybe. also, it's just Vietnam is so much closer in our memory. Maybe I, I find you know? it. I do find it interesting what? that like it wasn't. You know, because now people do focus more. And I think part of it's just because the major stories have been told. But now we focus more on the personal accounts um, in World War II and stuff like that. And it almost gets Vietnamian in terms of the brutality. You hear, like, I was talking to my friend and I turned around and then it was just a torso. The rest of them was gone. Um, yeah. I was um, – my my boss is uh, from Germany. Uh, he was born there. Um, and – he, How old is he has told me i can't remember the book off the top of my head i'll find it and i'll link it to y'all later but it um it takes the account of a very famous german soldier in world war ii i think he was a, a really good sniper I, I can't remember and he wasn't uh you know ss he wasn't a nazi he was wehrmacht um and he mentioned something very interesting he he mostly fought on the eastern front and oh. Ooh, and this is like and this yeah. is very it's rough. I, I think it's dark shit. You know, as dark as war can get, you know, enemies, good guys, bad guys, all that, I think there's some commonalities that a lot of people on the ground can consider. And this is I think in in as he started to tell the story, I kinda told I could kind of tell where it was going. Because it, it all revolved around what um some of these Russian soldiers started yelling um in the last moments of their life. And I guessed I was correct. But it, it was all based around um 
you know, the Russians are, well, they're Slavic. I'll just say that. But, like, sure, they whistle, run, fight. There's a million of us. And we don't give a shit because we're kind of desensitized to everything. And we don't give a shit how many of you die. We're just buying time and we don't really care. Um, mm. And according to this young man's account, well, young man at the time, um, they would literally just charge. They would get machine gunned down. Charge, machine gun down, charged, machine gun down, and they could hear the whistle in the background, and they just knew that another wave was coming, and they didn't most of them didn't have guns. And they would literally get caught Jesus. trying to climb the wall of bodies um that had been made. And once they get to the top, they get shot. And you can look over at these German machine gunners and they're looking at each other like, What the fuck what is the fuck? this? And they say the worst points was between waves where you could hear these young men trapped in this giant wall of bodies, all saying Dying. the same thing in Russian. And even though all these other Germans, you know, reporting on this didn't speak Russian, they all knew what they were saying. And I want y'all to take a wild guess. Mother is my guess. Mother yeah. is 100% the correct answer. Mm. All a whole wall of dying Russian boys screaming for their mothers like mm. uh, yeah that's uh like we we look at world war ii is this you know last like this grand good scale war. fleshy and like, yeah good obviously war. heroic triumphant type thing yeah. i think it is a great example of good versus evil like there's no way around that yeah but i mean there are still moments like that where it just shit we're all in this and then of course you know that doesn't mean that our side didn't do anything bad. There's the completely pointless bombing of Dresden. I, you know, I mm -hmm. can. Yeah, I well, mean, the well, evilness is King, more Hiroshima on Nagasaki. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It, it changes as you focus in on it. You know, on a grand scale, sure, you can argue evil versus um, good and stuff. But when you really get down to it, a lot of these guys are soldiers just, you know, exactly. obeying their orders. And They're I, just I, regular I, guys that this is mm -hmm. the cause that they were enlisted to fight for you know? and the reason yeah, i say all that to fight to, in a lot of them, forced, yeah, yeah some of them for sure and, and, and i want to you know and I'll, i also say oh, yeah this. enlisted bad yeah I'll, well i'll, I'll also say this because the whole point i was trying to get to was trying to get the audience into the mindset of being in that situation um on that oh. beach and i think yeah. in terms of because what was it the the canadian beach they didn't face a lot of resistance right I, I I think that was correct. I think yeah, that's no, the they case. were very they, polite. So they're, they're yeah. bombing. <laughs> they just apologize. Their bombings were. Oh successful yeah, we're sorry for intruding on you. <laughs> Real <laughs> sorry about the speech situation here. But um, sorry, yeah, sorry. You had just to let hit. us just right past Canadians, you there. We love you. If you're we know our bombs had uh, taken taken care of you and really done done a number on you. But here's some tanks. Here's so some if you tanks. just go ahead and put your hands up on your heads, and we'll go ahead and march right oh, on. Yeah, we'll I'll eat some of them potatoes with gravy on them. Oh yeah, three hots and a cot. I guarantee it. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. But I want I want uh, to point Juno this out, which is something I never really had else, thought about sort, too much up until recently. So, um, you know, in Nazi Germany, obviously, you have the Hitler Youth. You basically have a very state-centered mindset being raised. You're full of, you know, you're surrounded in propaganda. You're in the military. Yeah. You're, you're a professional Why army. Not? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. of course. These American boys being told, all right, Here's this beach. It's covered in encampments and pillboxes, and there's just going to be hellfire being rained down upon you from all angles. These are farm boys. No, oh, yeah. These aren't average age nineteen. These, yeah. these. I mean, they've been through basic, but you've been through basic, but basic for them, for them, which is not much. The, these aren't kids, you know, who were raised in a military-like environment. This is not a professional well, army. This is well, shit. We got to go to war. All yeah, right. This is lit. By then, drafted. the Germans were kind of scraping the, you know lower part of the barrel at that point True. too so but, it wasn't but you know still were, you're facing a poor professional army the americans were not professional i mean they were also being drafted though i think the the there was something this that I read the about war, the normandy defenders yes, that were they were above the average age or something because they had like they were just out. you know uh, they're fighting the soviets and everything they're fighting us now and and they were loose i, I guess you're right that they are a they are ideologically as a society more 
you know, committed well, to that. Well, at that point, but, you're defending what's yours as well, so there's some mindset that goes along with that. Well, I would argue France yeah. isn't theirs. But, yeah. Well, the, the whole... I know what you're saying. Truth. Truth. You, truth. I'm just making a joke. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I, I do I do agree that I think that the German soldiers would have faced some degree of uncertainty. They weren't like battle hardened necessarily no. like complete professional veteran soldiers or anything. But yeah, the Americans were totally um and probably well, the one British of the and things, stuff too. Yeah, for sure. And on. you're you're thrown onto this beach and said, All right, a lot of you are gonna die, but we have to, so run that way. Yeah, and I yeah. think one of the, if, if if you want to kind of get the dichotomy between the horrors of Omaha and sort of the resilience of those built to fight, yeah. um, the differences between Omaha and Point du Hoc, um, mm. Point du Hoc was fucked. They were they the, the so Rangers, what is Point the, du Hoc, Stephen? Real quick. So Point for our du listeners Hoc and is, me, <laughs> right? Yeah. So Point du Hoc was a. Uh, I guess a bluff. I don't know what the geological word for it is, the geographical term, but it's a, it's like a it's like a mountain, the cliffs cliff of Dover bluff that sticks out. Um, Ride rock sticks out into sticks it's out. It's called the a channel. promontory. Okay, whatever. It's called a promenade. Uh, it separates. <laughs> it separates the Omaha and the Utah beaches of Normandy. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, the idea was um, because because Point du Hoc stuck out into the water between the beaches. It was a great uh, position for observing and they had tactical advantages and yada, yada, yada. Sure. Yeah. You can <clears throat> essentially see both beaches from that location. You would think so. it's right. an objective that you want to get. Yeah. yeah. And there were these guns, these, uh, these, these, these big ass uh, guns. What were they called? Shooty. Mm. Guns. Big old shooty guns. Artillery howitzers. Big, yeah, there was some sort of artillery um, that were supposed to be up here in these. Anyway, I'm getting too bogged down in the details. I think I know what you're getting at. Go go for it, though. <laughs> I remember but reading this, and I think is what I'm saying. The the Rangers who were going because of the weather and all that stuff, they ended up getting like split up and delayed and all this shit. And so by the time they ended up at the cliffs. The Germans already knew they were there, and so there's like, you know, a couple hundred men who are trying to climb up these cliffs, like literally climb up these cliffs while the Germans are shooting them, throwing grenades at them, I mean, doing yeah, everything, nuts. that cutting off the ropes that they've, you know, thrown up. I mean, all of these things, they are trying to kill these men. Like, yeah, it's just such an end. One of the it men, like harkens to a castle siege kind of, you know, trying to climb. Yeah, the walls and one of the, of the one of the men I listened to who was talking, who was retelling his his tale of the assault of Point Du Hoc, but he was like, "Yeah, I mean, the reason that we were here on this mission to begin with is because we were kind of fucking crazy. Like the men that they chose to be the Rangers to begin with were kind of weird, but then the Rangers that they chose." for this mission Mm -hmm. were those that found excitement in nothing. Yeah. They, they found, we found, we only found joy in like the purest of excitement. And I think he literally, there's a quote and I might try to find it style where he says, and you know, we, we know we found joy and excitement and adventure and there's no greater adventure than warfare. This, um, Ranger Battalion you're talking about, right? The 2nd Ranger Battalion? Yes. Uh-huh. Exactly. Was led by one James Earl Rudder. Yes. Oh, hey, man. Yo, who is that? Aggie. Yep. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Texas A&M uh, Famous president at some point. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Rudder Tower. Pretty good guy. And all that. Name hey. Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> Whoop. He says the casualty but, uh, rate for that was greater than fifty percent. He was wounded. Oh, it twice. was savage. It was savage because you know because of the you know the delays and all that stuff. I mean they they, I mean they were literally climbing these cliffs and the Germans were just like dropping grenades on them, being like, "Here you go, here's a grenade. Oh, <laughs> there you go." And now twenty of you are dead. Like it was brutal. You should have spent the the throw grenade back ability. Yeah, just what? tap R one. <laughs> oh, they're climbing. 
Yeah, you can do it. This is the thing. They're climbing up these like sheer you have to walls. Hit our ones. You just pick up Juggernaut. Dude. You'll be all right. It's wild. And not to get too so so paint this picture. Half so half <laughs> half of the half of this this force that is supposed to attack this cliffs right. Half of them are not there. Yeah. Well, because they got swept away. Not there. For sure. Oh, they didn't even no, make it no, to the no, beach. No, no, no. They're not there. They never made it. They ended up on the other side, and they ended up actually landing at Omaha Beach. Ah, uh, so not much better, really. Well, markedly better than than this group, sure. But there's speculation that the reason that that because of these Rangers landing on Omaha Beach instead that that's the that's one of the one of like the so like a tipping point that Omaha Beach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because then they were able to kind of pincer in on Point Du Hawk from utah and omaha anyway just um, at least at the very least split attention to some point in case some, in case so, yeah. gave them a case, lot of help when they needed it kind of. yeah exactly in case the three of you and the listeners have not realized i got really bogged down and really interested by the uh militaristic details of of normandy that i had never really experienced and researched before yeah there's I a lot it. more than just you show up in an amphibious landing vehicle and run past you know the yeah the tank busters and stuff and up and yeah, and win. I, I mean there were i didn't realize there were so many different beaches oh, yeah. and like the the subtleties it's, to each and everything so. i'm glad you got bogged down in it though because like i am one to i'm obsessed with the causes i'm obsessed with the event the effects and then like oh yeah some battle happened when i was you know, yeah i i found I gloss all over of that, that part because i'm a loser <laughs> absolutely fascinating and and i've got i way too much in my head that i'm trying to talk about very quickly uh, <laughs> yeah i mean we're so. not going to get to all of it and, i mean that was one reason we focused on normandy alone because just the grand right. scale of the war is just yeah. i mean it's you mm-hmm. know phenomenal it's insane. And, 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 and scope so. But um, last last point about Point Du Hawk I wanted to make since we're on the topic, yeah. um, these men, I mean, like you said, like the the the, the kill rate was <laughs> just not good. Um, they make it to the top of this bluff, and their ultimate goal was to destroy these artillery guns. Um, they get up there, they kill all the Germans that are up there. And the guns aren't there. Mm. Like, <laughs> Oops. how brutal? Yeah, yeah. That is that whole, where you <laughs> that your whole objective, like, and everything you lost to get there? Just, yeah, you have they... been fighting for your actual life, fighting for your friend's life, fighting for the guy who just plummeted off the back of this cliff that you've been climbing for his life because you were going to complete the mission, the mission. Yeah, well, and at you some get point. up to the top of that. Yeah, your and... your note says eventually they did find the guns, which I can only imagine yes. everyone that made it there just like instant rage. They were like, "We are finding these fucking guns, and they are gone." You I'm know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Out of them. Yeah, I kind of exactly. thought that the uh, you know at some point the mission would have <laughs> inadvertently shifted to for fucking survive, and then when you get there, like, oh, shit, the guns aren't here, but. Jesus, I'm breathing. You <laughs> know, like yeah. I mean, I know, and that's the well, thing is that these Rangers are so fucking crazy. Right. That's true. Yeah, that was so going to be my pissed point. off. Yeah. These they are like kind so of the Marines. Of, these are not the exactly. guys that say, army. "Well, thank God I lived." <laughs> exactly. It. These are the guys that say, "Let's go find those motherfuckers and yep. destroy those guns." Yeah, these remember, are those these are Canadian troops. So <laughs> right, these are yeah, these are I'm yeah, they, and that is exactly what they did. That is exactly the, the what they did. They are fucking. They were. They were so upset, so angry, so driven because they got there and they had not achieved. And so it was like, "Fuck it, we're gonna find those motherfucking guns." And so they tracked them. They literally found tracks in the dirt in the well, road. Yes, typically where you of, find tracks <laughs> of tanks that could <laughs> carry in the guns side. of this weight. And they tracked them down to this little village, and they found them. They were just sitting. They had been unattended. They were just kind of hanging out in some little, like, farm land. I was going to say, stuff. like a farmhouse, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, they, they were completely not They were at grandma's in... house? Yeah. They were at grandma's house. <laughs> grandma's house. They were not in a position to be used. But these men, this was their fucking job. We're going to make sure that these motherfucking guns are destroyed. And they pumped them with... You know, thermite grenades and termites. destroyed them. I mean, termites. Yeah, your, termite your note, grenades. Your note said termites, termite, and I took that to mean termites. Uh, anyway, I see. yeah, uh, you wrote termites, and then you were like, 
termites, eh? And I was like, oh, no, I I wrote that part. Dude, the, can- oh. the Canadians showed up and threw termites on them. I I didn't know how to. Uh, but how this to should work. No, these are metal eating termites. Well, but without the wheels attached, then they won't be able to transport them and shut well, up. Come on, with the wheels, now, I can't move them. How am I supposed to fight? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, that's crazy so, though. Yeah. yeah, the numbers on that um 220 oh, just the strength of the troops and about 225 troops like that's not a lot going up and, a cliff against yeah. these guys and then 135 killed or wounded. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's, more, like way, way more coin, than half you, of them. You may or may not be making it up that. Way. Yeah, mm-hmm. flip a coin. Sense. If it's heads, you're dead. If it's, if tails, it's tails, you might, you might also dead. be dead. Yeah, <laughs> but have a bullet maybe you. you might live. Oh, it's oh yeah, dead or wounded. I guess yeah. True. Yeah, I mean, and in Omaha, even reached you know certain levels of that. Well, just I mean, it's like casualty. D- I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, but like, and this kind of goes back to what you were talking about with uh, what we were discussing with. Uh, what our perception, I guess, is of World War II is right. you kind of get the newsreel side of things, you know. Yeah. Of course. Go get them, boys. Right. Like, you know, and, and what did we get <laughs> from Point Hawk, from Hitler. D-Day, from all that is the newsreel account, right? So yeah. it's like, oh, great, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't think it's so much of an age thing in terms of the difference of Vietnam and everything. Or later wars, it's just the access to it. What? Well, yeah, know, I mean, everything a, from World when War II was strictly like, controlled. Like the the public feel, you know, like the, the age of not yeah. the age of people, but like the, no, 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 yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, like uh, the the era. Sure, you know, yeah, maybe people would open up more about that and everything. But I, I think the bigger difference, but is the media is what, what people could see yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. World War Two, sure. it was you it's got a point. government publication of. You know, we're winning the war. We're beating back the Nazis. We're and what we're you know, doing taking is right the fight and to the good fascists, and sort of and thing. Beating yeah. off the Nazis. <laughs> you know, and you, you got that versus you got you know reporters showing was, you yeah. in, live in color in your living room. Um, it was very split American whether troops. we should be in Vietnam. Yeah, that I mean, Vietnam's a whole you know, different beast for sure. But you saw the caskets coming off the plane world. and everything. No, nothing like that in in World War Two. You know it. You you did have anti war sentiment and stuff, but it was yeah. But World War Two was a necessary war. Like there was no way around yeah, it. It was. I mean, it was, yeah, for sure, different causes and stuff, uh, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's something that we can see in Point Du Hoc and something we can see in the brutality of Omaha Beach and everything is, you know, when you investigate deeper and you see the first hand accounts and actually, you know, right, hear yeah. from people, you fu- you do get the yeah. They they were not nearly as available and and everything after the war as as they are now because of the internet and because of media and everything so yeah Yeah. look up um you know look into um i want to say his name is ernie pile um gomer pile (laughs) (laughs) uh he was he was one of the reporters that um kind of quote unquote told the truth about d-day you know like uh, he was one of the ones on the boats. Uh, not obviously, he didn't. It wasn't on the beaches, but he was on the you know on some of the battleships and stuff. Was he on the hills? <laughs> <Island>? <laughs> That's what I was trying to come up with. <laughs> I knew it. I, I, I saw what you were trying to do. I'm like, gonna streets. get my boy. I'm gonna get my boy right here. <laughs> but, uh, he's he's he's. If you can you know you can look up some of his publications. Uh, he's got some really interesting stories. Um, and yeah, I mean you know just anything you could find that is. Uh, first-hand accounts. I mean, it's fascinating. It's sad um, in a lot of ways, but it's awesome in some ways. You know, you see kind of this like true heroism. You know, this true bravery, true courage, and uh, just just resilience, and uh, just the humanity it's... that is. I mean, that that's both positive and negative. But just the fact. Oh that, yeah, of course. Like the either side, like these were human beings, and they, you know, absolutely, they could understand yeah. that it wasn't an ideal situation. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, I will actually. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, one of the one of the documentaries I watched. One of the many. Um, it was called Operation Overlord and Neptune. I found it on YouTube. It was That's just Operation Overlord and Neptune, and then in parentheses, D Day documentary. So it's very straightforward. Very Man. yeah, <laughs> very they, singular. They were but, not. Um, I don't even know who did this documentary. Um, one thing while you're 
looking for that that I'll sure. kind of make a nod to when you're saying the humanity on both sides. That's what I was thinking about when Chris, you were given that anecdote of the German sniper and uh, the Russian yeah. waves and everything. Yeah. That's what I was thinking is kind of like yeah. at the end of the day, you boil it down to you know you're you know fighting for the assholes on Nazi Germany side. You're fighting for the soviets or the japanese or the americans or whoever yeah no matter what your day, government tells you you're still a person yeah you get laced through and you're bleeding out you're crying yeah. for your mom yeah yeah you know yeah um and, and you know this this documentary has some accounts of you know german soldiers um and it's uh yeah i mean the, the human side of it is is sobering for sure yeah yeah but it's a, it's part of our history. That it, a, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's for sure a part of our history, and it's it's something that we need to talk about. It's something that it's interesting to talk about. It's something that we can say is cool to talk about because we honor those who lost their life, and we honor the memory. Crazy sons of bitches who charged a beach filled with artillery barrages and machine yeah, gun fire. Motherfucking badasses yeah. who didn't know what they were getting into. Yeah. These little kids, boys, kids younger than us, man. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Gave their lives for things, you know. Far younger than us. Well, we're not that old, Stephen. Yeah. Chill out. Hey, but yeah, yeah eighteen-year-olds. Like I mean, Stephen and I are about to turn 11, thirty. Twelve years old. Yeah. 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 Well, y'all have another year before y'all have to worry about it. Stephen and well, I. Well, that, that's not three that's not the point. The point is, but yes. the people charging the beaches, the people also who just you know were bombed. You were mentioning the yeah the civilians the uh bombing raids that didn't go as planned and yeah, and yeah that hit oh, man. Civilians okay too, so. i'm gonna butcher this uh so sure. um like i said you know, like my boss is uh german and we talk about world war ii stuff a lot um man he's got an incredible t- i think it's like a gosh, like an uncle or something he had who uh, everyone thought died uh he was captured by the russians and was in a fucking siberia for years and then when they were like all right get out and they just kicked him out and said walk. <laughs> and then years later, he walks all you know, walks all the way to his hometown, and like everyone just, sees him. His hair is long, and he's barefoot. And they're like, "What the fuck?" And he's just there. And he, after um, he died a few years later, but uh, he was apparently really quiet. But like, so you know, obviously, you know, the war affected him in certain ways. Uh, he wasn't born during it, um, or you know, I think he was born in the '60s. Yeah, because he's 57 now. But um, we were um, talking about, you know, that personal... Because he and I talk, you know, about uh, the personal accounts in the war. And one of them was Mm -hmm. where I I think... Ah, shit. I don't remember what town it was in. But um, essentially there was a, a German tank and an American tank. And um, it sounds like the lead up to a joke. A no, German no, tank no, no, and American walk into a bar, roll into, into a, a bar. French into village, a bar. drive yeah. into a bar. Um, and anyway, there was um, a woman and a man, and they were trying to get out of the city. And I don't know if this was in Germany or if it was in France. I think it was, I think it was in Germany. And so all of a sudden, this um, this American tank and this German tank see each other. But all of a sudden, this car goes careening down the, the street. Mm. And just because you're in a war frame of mind, they see this car and they both start shooting at it. Oh. But I, neither side knew that the other one was shooting at it. And I think the Americans got uh. there later and uh, the guy was just dead and the woman was dying. And they put a blanket over her and they were like, she's basically like the medic just goes i'm making her comfortable and Mm -hmm. for years and years and years this american soldier was like i shot that woman i killed her and people you know it doesn't matter how many people said look that wasn't your fault it was war that thing moved who knew what it could have been didn't matter Mm -hmm. he not too long ago met the german soldier in the other tank who also shot at the car oh wow and for years and years and years, he thought the same they thing. both thought they killed her. Yeah, that's wild. And it wasn't until they met each other, I think um, a descendant of the woman who died also like showed up and forgave them. Like, it wasn't your fault. Like, 
Yeah, it's got to be powerful. That's crazy. Like, j- yeah. you know, that's what's crazy about that war is you have this, you know, obviously Nazi Germany being this great evil, but, like, those boys on the ground weren't like that. <laughs> they were just yeah. doing what yeah. Yeah. they had to do or what were to- not had to do, but doing what they were told to do. Told yeah. right. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, doing, yeah, that's that's a good way to yeah. yeah. Um and what, what they, they were doing what they were told was the right thing to do. Right, exactly. And yeah. it was such but a were told global that. phenomenon, and it's, I mean, like it echoed for the entire for mm-hmm. the entire world. It's it's yeah, you know, it's got long reaching there are atrocities in echoes Asia too. And um, I mean, the echoes are reaching to Germany to this day. I right, say. exactly. But yeah. I mean, just individually, like you know, whether you're you had an ancestor that fought or was just around during that time. Things yeah. were so, I mean, it was so global that it affected pretty much everyone, you know, like yeah. whether you, your, your ancestors or your grandparents or whatever stayed at home and worked through it during all the, the shit that, that that entailed or actually fought during it, you know, mm-hmm. so, I mean, I mean it's, yeah, you could be yeah. on a small island in the Pacific and it would have affected you. Like, right. It's mm-hmm. just, it was truly a world. And hopefully war, we never see anything sure. like that ever again. I Right. And D Day was certainly it, one of the, if not, you know, the one most of the most important renowned, moments. Or n- not renowned, but uh, well known. It was one known. of the turning points. It was one yeah. of those things where points it's like, all world. right, ignoring the Pacific, the European theater has essentially gotten to this point. And this is, all right, we've done North Africa, you know, Italy's on the ropes. But now it's time, if we're really going to make a difference, we have to invade mainland Europe. And mm-hmm. they see the worst. Yeah, the Germany Soviets were at that point pushing on the they Eastern were pushing Front. On the they Eastern were probably yeah. going to grind Hitler at least to a stalemate. Right. Um, it's do or die. If not yeah. defeating him, but it was going to be very, very close what they could do yeah, just on their own. Yeah, and they were throwing so many people at it that, you know, yeah. it wasn't really feasible. But at that point, they had the offensive. It was, you know, I mean, they might could have done it without it, but it would, I don't, I don't think they would have. Yeah, they it would have ground to a stalemate at yeah. some point, you know. Probably, um, but yeah, I with a lot more life. There's this new book out I need to read about D-Day. It's called Soldier, Sailor, Frogman, Spy, Airman, Gangster, Kill or Die: How the Allies Won Won on D-Day by Giles Morton. Whoa. It's supposed to be one of the best books written about, it. and it is about some a lot of the personal accounts, I think. But I've heard a lot of yeah. great things about it, and it yeah. came out in March, so I've been thinking about picking it up. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Because I think yeah, the first that 24 hours the... of the D-Day invasion by a symphony of incredible accounts yeah. of unknown and unheralded members of the Allied and Axis forces. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick this up. Yeah, that's that's I I will having knowing nothing about it recommend it <laughs> because I think that is something that is going to be very important and very special and something that we need to uh, you know not to wax you know super serious but you know we need to consider um, the personal. Yeah. effects that uh it had on people it had on the world it had on us and you know like you mentioned before josh you know uh it's the stigma around it is is very different than it is around war today um you know it it affected those men those who survived very seriously and we should honor everything they did because those men are fucking Badass. And special shout out to um let's see. Tom Rice. Did y'all hear about this? Let's see. Um he was part no. of the paratrooper group that uh dropped in oh. on D Day and he um at ninety seven years old just uh John Jacob Jingle Hire Smith. No. <laughs> but at ninety seven years old, um he did a parachute jump over Normandy today, I think. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was either, yeah, I guess today. Yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom Rice. Um, he... He's like, man, it was way easier this time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, I think it's faster. probably said something now, to that effect. His, uh, he's With a little more 90. experience. I'm... <laughs> the dude is 97 years old, but he did say, like, I'd do it again. Like, what? like the actual attack what? or just jumping? He already... uh, I think he yeah he said I'd go up and do it again. <laughs> yeah, I got I mean, a here, here's airborne, a quote. I suppose I got a replacement left knee and a right knee is a little sore, but we're going to ignore that. I do this because I like to, and it's an extended dimension of maybe my personality. 
There you <laughs> go. Yeah. It's awesome. Those men are awesome. Just everything around this uh, is oh, just so special. Steven, hold on so one cool second. And... Uh, just to go along with what you were saying, there aren't too many 97-year-old rodeo riders, but there's one 97-year-old parachute jumper arriving in daylight <laughs> and waving the flag this time. A different kind of jumper calling a different kind of bravery. They weren't shooting at me, Rice said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you read some of those paratrooper accounts, and it's like, they were like, Welp, I'm just like falling into a ladder of red tracer bullets. Right, oh. and just floating down to where I won't die immediately when I And hit, if I so have like, enough holes through maybe. my parachute, then I get to splat as opposed yeah. to... Yeah. yeah, anyway. Because it's been Memorial Day recently, and because this was a, uh, you know, a war-centric episode, if any uh, servicemen are listening, thank you for your service. Absolutely. For sure. Of course. And of course. then, yeah, I mean, to all of those affected by d-day you know this hopefully this does some justice to it as far as uh giving some other accounts that people haven't heard and you know hey if you if you know anyone like hey be thankful because we're about to lose that generation too we're pretty close Mm -hmm. that's true yeah if you uh, add you know don't probably don't pry and stuff in an insensitive way but, if, but, you know, if there are people there that, you know, that you know in your family and stuff that you can talk to about this. Record and, those stories because yeah. there's they're they're not many left. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember when we were younger, that was happening to the World War One generation. I remember, Absolutely. yeah, we were, I was um, talking to somebody about this the other day. We were in, high, I remember being in high school and uh, they were like, the last, like, six remaining World War One American veterans gathered here today. Those guys are all gone now. Yeah. 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 So and yeah, for if you, if for you good or bad, that's anyone. our legacy. You know, that's yeah. part of our history. So the world's history. Definitely, definitely. Call it a wrap. I think that's a wrap. I believe so. I appreciate all of you individuals for listening to us wax and discuss and laugh and hopefully bring some enlightenment to something that is dark and interesting and fascinating and very important hopefully after this can tell that to not confuse our irreverence with um disrespect disrespect (laughs) yeah disrespect yeah Yeah. absolutely (laughs) absolutely not at all we can be respectful and laugh about it at the same time that's That's what what we we try to do we can also be (laughs) very disrespectful but we aren't about this (laughs) wait and arrest erectable i don't know we're, we're we are erectful. That's erectful. <laughs> I was trying to combine um, constantly and erectable. I was we're to that combine too. Combine disrespectful and irreverent together. Irreverent is what we are. We are we're always erectful. erect. For <laughs> my name is Stephen. We are always <laughs> erect. For I am Gr- Stephen. <laughs> for Grady and Josh and Chris, we have been the Sagely Stage Stooges. You have been awesome. We'll see you next Love time. You, and quiet. Why did he talk to us? Good night and good luck. Two kinds of fuck you, bye. There's throw <laughs> two men on this. Beach. I'm gonna have to fuck one. <laughs> <laughs> you get off of the of the uh, like amphibious boat thing. You look around. Shit, there are only two men on this there beach. I'm getting gun down. We landed on the right. wrong beach. <laughs> huh. Well, you're like in the south of Spain. You're like yeah. there's just some sunbathers there. There's like a couple <laughs> of topless <laughs> Spanish women. Just like, oh well, well we're definitely not this... gonna make it now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>